Thank you for tuning in to Restoring Your Life, an outreach of Life Application Ministries in Mount Ockham, California. Hi, this is Linda Lang. I'm going to be taking us on a journey through teachings, insights, and practical application for healing and restoration. Now buckle your seatbelt, hang on, and enjoy the ride as we continue Restoring Your Life. Welcome to my craft room. Uh, I have a craft room, I have an office, you know, we got things going on here right now because we're kind of, a, you know, using up every space in our house. And this is one of the things I'm doing right now. There has been a demand for masks, okay? I don't know how long it's going to last, but I want to teach you how to make a mask. I know that you've seen a lot, maybe if you're already a sewer, that you can make the ones with the pleats that goes this way and it's got the elastic on the sides. Well... I came up with a, a solution because I couldn't find any elastic for the very longest time. So I decided to use string. Okay. Now the supplies that you need to make this mask are very simple. You probably have it all around your house. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to make a mask that doesn't use elastic. It's going to look like this, and what it does is it go, it just opens up, it's string, goes around your face, comes down here, there's a little push here so that you can put on your nose, and then this button cinches it right up. So it's nice and tight, fits any ear size. There's only one hang up on this one. If this slider does not stay, it slides down as, as the mask starts to fall off. So I found these little things. These are, uh, that goes on the bottom of like um, a hat. You know how you push it up and it stays? Go ahead and rob one from one of your hats. Use it to make this mask. Again, you can use a button, but be warned, it will slide up and down. Okay, so let's see what the materials are that we need. Scissors. Pipe cleaners. Now, uh, I had some pipe cleaners, but they're kind of sharp on the end. I'm very concerned about that. You have to make sure it gets into a seam uh, binding area in order for it to stay secure. But what I found, oh yes, I started out with this. This is just um, ribbon that I got at the thrift store that has wire in it. So I use this for a while. It's a little wide, but it still works really good. Then I was cleaning out my shed and I came across this. I don't even know what it is, but this is exactly what I needed. It's, it, I went and opened up one of those masks that you get at the hospital. It has these very things in it. They're small. One of the other things you can use are tie wraps. You get around items. You can just flatten it out and use a tie wrap. This is one of those tie wraps around packages, you know, you put your cellophane around it, the bag, and you wind it up. It's like at the end of a, a bread bag or something. So you can use that. You just simply open it up and just flatten it out. You can use that. Okay, so the rest of the materials you will need is string. Uh, you want to use a thin string that's going to be able to be brought through with a safety pin through the casing because you're going to draw it and it's going to come down here. So you can use thin ribbon, string, but don't use bias tape. It's just too thick. And uh, you can just use whatever you got, some twine. I don't know. You get creative, raffia, whatever you want to use. Um, and then we're going to sew it into the mask. So the first thing you want to do is cut out the squares. You want to cut two pieces. Now I'm doing plain, I'm not making it fancy so that you can see my stitching. But what I did was I made a pattern. It's just uh, six and a half by nine inches. That's it. So you want to cut two six and a half by nine inches. Now the other option that you have is you can make the mask with a pocket because I have some filter in here. And I'm not going to show you that one at this point. I'm just going to show you the plain one where it's just got the regular front and back. That's really gets in the advanced, okay? 
And this is actually kind of advanced. you got to really know how to sew in order to make this and be thought, thinking about how it's going to go together. <clears throat> okay, so I cut out two pieces. <clears throat> Sorry. I need to wear a mask. <laughs> okay, uh, I cut out two pieces. And what I'm going to do is because I'm going to show you how it actually gets sewn. I'm going to use a pin. Let me see if I can get a pin, a pencil. I'm going to use a pencil just for the sample. And what you're going to do is so now we're here with these two pieces. Let's see. Okay, let's go this way. I was trying to figure out how the camera's working. All right. And we're going to use, I'm going to use my little pattern that I created here, but I've got it pretty much down by heart. We're going to sew across right sides together, and we're going to sew across, but I'm just going to make some dotted lines to show you how we're going to sew across. And you just sew completely across. Then you take your string, and it's a, you're going to cut two 14-inch pieces. Okay? Two 14-inch pieces. So that's 14... And another 14. Okay, so there's two pieces. And you're going to want to tuck this inside on both sides. Just roll this up in the middle so that it doesn't get all messed up. And that goes on that side and that rolls in the middle. Because you're going to want to do is sew these up here. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm going to, I'll pin it. And where are my pins? Okay, I need pins. <laughs> All right, I'm going to need some pins here. And I'm just going to pin it so that I know where it's going to go. And this one's going to be pinned on this side too. Okay. I, I actually made little basting lines here. I pinned these two to the side because I'm going to take my uh, item to my sewing machine. And I'm going to show you uh, by using a better pin than that. Um, like I said, this is just a sample one. So I'm going to sew across here. Five-eighths inches. Okay. And then I'm going to sew over this uh, what I pinned in okay each side on each string I'm gonna sew I'm gonna sew all the way down 5 8 inch in and stop here okay you want to stop there you want to leave at least an inch a little over an inch right and then you're gonna pick up your needle and then sew sew straight across here Oops, I'm sorry. I made a line across there. You're not supposed to sew there. So what I did was I'm going to sew all the way to here, and then I'm going to jump over and start here and sew all the way to the end again. Then I'm going to skip the space and sew up and over that. So here's what it looks like. You're going to sew across the top. Make sure these are two pinned in. You sew down the side, and then you skip a little bit, because that's where your casing is going to be. You need to be able to have a space to put that. And then you sew into the middle. You, you make sure you kind of eyeball where you're going to stop, because that's where your chin connector is going to go. And then you skip, and then you keep sewing all the way to the end. All right? Then you skip an inch, just like you did on this side. Skip an inch and sew all the way up and through the thickness of the thread, okay, of the string. So that's what we're going to do. You see how that looks? You might want to even draw this on your pattern. You can do it on the wrong side. You won't see it all the way through. So I'm going to go ahead and sew it. I'll be right back. Okay, so here's it sewn. I use black thread and... Um, I have opened gaps on each side, so I want to cut my string so that nothing hinders on both sides. Nothing hinders going through. All right, here's an interesting thing, though. We're going to want to have to turn this right side out. And so we want to do that, and we're going to use this little hole 
uh, that's at the chin. So it's going to be very tedious. That's why you can actually make the hole bigger if you want to so that you can turn it or put a different hole somewhere else and turn it. Okay, so we've turned it inside out. Make sure all your corners come out. Okay, make sure all the edges are square. And then there's your hole that's going to happen for your um, you, when you turned it. And it's going to be where your drawstring is going to come through. So I'm going to go ahead and iron this. The next thing you want to do is you want to put the nose piece in the top. Okay, so I am going to cut one of these. Just a little piece. About two inches. I'm going to poke it through the hole that I turned it in and kind of push it up to the top. And then once I get it pushed to the top, I tuck it into the seam area and then I sew it in. So I put like a little bit of a, a casing up here. So I'm going to sew a crossed top stitch and hold that in there. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did was I sewed the seam of course and then I put two little tacks next to each side centralizing that nose piece and making sure it's folded in the back oh yes that's together that's in the center it bends it's fine and that's the top that is complete on the top now we're going to start working on the bottom what we've done is we've left two holes on the sides when we sewed now we're going to sew straight across to make a casing I'll be right back Right, I am back now. I sewed this casing. Now it's ready. The bottom is ready to put this thread through or the string or the rope or whatever you've created there. And this kind of gets a little bit apart. Oh, those are not good scissors. Okay, have good scissors. And then you just take your little safety pin and weave it into your thread however you want to do it to make sure it's secure and close it. And then you want to just case it through here like that. If you can see that. And then I'm just going to bring it on down through this hole like that. Okay? And you want to do the same thing to the other side. And what I like to do to make sure it doesn't fall apart or come out I just take the two on the end and I tie it together for just now and then while I'm working on it so nothing falls out. So that's together like that. Okay. All right. Now we're almost done. What we're going to do now is put the pleats in it. And you want the pleats to go down. When your, your, your mask is up on the top, you want the pleats to go down. So simply just take your fingers and pinch like that and then pin the pleat on each side you're going to make three of them so you want to kind of play with it to make the size work because sometimes you make the pleat too big you got to adjust it and all that now the reason why we do the pleats is because it helps it stay on your face it wraps around your face. Okay, so it goes this way. All right. And when you sew, do not sew over your string. Okay, so I'm going to do another pleat here. And one down here. You can go across the top of the casing like I did. You can't see that sewing line, which is fine. You can see it or not see it. But I'm not going to sew over this. I need to keep this nice and free. Okay. Now I'm going to go over and sew just these sides together on the up and down. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so I just sewed the pleats. You see them like this. Now I'm going to iron it down. You're pretty much done with your mask. Cut off these little ends here. Right, so there's your mask. Now we're going to put on the little loop part, but right now that's what it looks like. Okay, it's got the drawstring down here, and you've got your stuff that goes around your ears. 
All right, to complete the project, you add this to the string. You got to put both loops. You push this in and it makes a hole and you got to put both in there. Okay, this is the hard part because it's hard to push this in, which is good because it stays secure. Now I'm going to cut that off so I can shove it through that hole. Doesn't matter which way, just shove it through the hole. Make sure it gets in on the both sides. I don't know if you can see me doing that. And then pull them both through. Okay, which is really good about this is that now it's secure. This ain't going to go nowhere. This is like tight. So when you put your mask on, the button's not going to slide down. I was using a button before. It does slide down. It's just a nuisance. But it's going to be secure. Let me show you what that looks like on. Finished the mask. Pretty almost finished. You put it on. Goes around your ears. Pull it. Push that down over your nose. Pull the string so it's secure on your face. Push this little button in like this and up you go. There it is. And it is on there, man. It ain't going anywhere. It is on there. And you can breathe in this. Of course, it depends on the material too you use. And it's in there. And if it, oh, it's too tight, you just loosen it up just a little bit. Bring it on down. And then you've got a little looser. We don't want people to end up going like this the rest of their lives. I know so many people that are wearing masks and their elastic is just making their ears go out like this. And <laughs> I don't want it to do that. So make sure that it's not too tight, that it makes your ears look like Dumbo after a while. You just simply push this in and go up like that. Now, isn't that beautiful? Now, again, you to take it off, you just squish it down and go back down. What I'm going to do on this. You have been watching Restoring Your Life with author, teacher, and minister Linda Lang. Restoring Your Life is an outreach of Life Application Ministries in Mount Ockham, California. To contact or support this program, visit our website at truthfreeze.org or write Life Application Ministries, P.O. Box 165, Mount Ockham, California, 95656 or call 530-620-4641. Join us next time and continue Restoring Your Life.